What's going on guys? Back out here in Ontario, California to check out some more bikes from Aventon. It is raining just a little bit. We got uh, you know, clouds blowing in and rain coming down. It was coming down pretty heavy earlier and we got kind of a clear spot here. So we're, let's see if we can make this happen. I guess it doesn't rain like this very much here. And so, you know, they brought it in special just for us. We're trekking right along. So the bike we're checking out today, this is the Aventon Level. This is a new one from them. This is a commuting e-bike. And like I said, new one from Aventon, value priced, great price of just $15.99. Got some fantastic features and components on it. Pretty good warranty. You're looking at a year comprehensive warranty and then lifetime warranty on the frame. That's awesome. Aventon's also got a lot of dealers, which is one of the perks from you know, working with them. There's a lot of bikes out there that are direct to consumer and you get a, bit, a little bit more of a competitive price there usually and you know but then you don't have the dealer support now the dealer support can be nice if you want to go in and get fitted try out some different sizes this bike's actually got three different frame sizes we're on the medium today now Aventon is doing a great job of really competitively pricing their bikes even though they have the hybrid model where you can get it direct to consumer or you can go in and get it at one of their dealers in the US or in Canada. If you order it direct to consumer and have them ship it to you, you do get free shipping. Now you gotta put it together when you get it. From when I talked to the guys at the Aventon warehouse earlier today, they told me they build the bike there and assemble it and then they do some minor disassembly which is basically the front wheel coming off and then the handlebars being turned so that they're able to ship it. So it's still pretty dang close to being assembled all the way. Now they have done a great job on providing manuals and videos for assembly and also for the bikes themselves. I was checking out some manuals on their website. I was impressed with how thorough they are and how easy to understand they are. They're really well done on that. Now, as I mentioned, this is a new one from them. Aventon has had the Pace has been their, their most well-known models, the Pace 350 and the Pace 500. So this one here, the level, we're using the same motor from Shinji that is the 500 watt rear hub motor there. Peaks at about 750 watts, 50 Newton meters of torque. Good solid motor there. If you've ridden the Pace 500, it's gonna be a similar experience, but more powerful. This is actually set up for a class three, which is pretty dang awesome. Before we dig into that, I mentioned there's three sizes. We got the medium today, which is about a 17.5 inch size frame. There's also a large one that's a 20 inch frame. Unfortunately, they didn't have one of those available for me to ride, which is a little bit of a bummer since I'm really tall. I'm six foot three. I'll talk about how the sizing and the fit feels on this medium here. If you're really tall, you could go with a large frame, and I think it would be a pretty solid fit even for a tall rider. So I'm a fan of that you get only the one color option here they call this the earth gray i do like the color on this i think it's really well done i like how stealthy the bike is this is something that aventon has been steadily upping their game on is the stealth look and just the clean i mean look at this the internally routed cabling we got this going into the frame here it looks just awesome the battery is in the down tube there you can see the cover for it but it doesn't stand out as an e-bike. You gotta kind of look close and notice the charging port and the motor to realize that it's an e-bike. That's something that I appreciate because they're e-bikes are you know a high value item and so they can be a bit of a theft risk, especially in you know certain parts of the country. It's it can be a little bit risky to leave your bike parked anywhere out in public. So when it's a little bit more stealthy like this, the battery and the controller are integrated, that can be a nice thing. People might not notice it's an e-bike, a little bit lower risk there. That's something that I appreciate. And I think it looks better too. I'm a fan of the sleek look. It's not everyone's cup of tea, but I definitely like it. And Aventon has packed in the features here for th that $15.99 price point. As I mentioned, that's a very competitive price for a good commuting bike. Now we've got the rear rack, as you can see here. This comes standard on here, standard rear rack. 20, what is that, 27 kilogram weight limit, I believe. It's about 55 pounds. Now it's on, mounted on here, as you can see here and here, it's not frame integrated. And the difference between, you know, having it mounted versus frame integrated, frame integrated ones are part of the frame. They can be a bit more sturdy, a bit more stable, but then there's the flip side of, you know, not being able to take that rack off if you wanted to mount something else like a trailer or maybe even just a different rack. These ones you could switch out if you wanted to, but this is a great rack, honestly. I'm, I'm a big fan of this. It's got a lot of different attachment points. Feels very sturdy. You're looking at a total capacity of weight for the bike of 300 pounds. And they break that down on their website. They say, you know, 50 pounds on the rear rack, 250 pounds for the rider. Pretty standard there. For the weight of the bike itself, they did a pretty good job here, 58.6 pounds. I think they have it listed on their website. 
as weighing in at 62 pounds, but 58.6 is actually, I weighed, they had, a, they had a large frame one back at the warehouse that I was able to weigh and get that weight. That one wasn't set up for riding, which is why I don't have it out here today, but that's you know, pretty, pretty standard, pretty average for an e-bike. Other features that you get on here for that price of $15.99 are the fenders, aluminum alloy on the fenders here, good full cover. These are definitely commuting fenders just based on the coverage here. Good long fenders. I like aluminum alloy because they're lightweight, they're super durable, they're not vulnerable to you know rust and the dents and dings that you might get on steel fenders. Don't rattle like a plastic one does. So alloy is one of my favorites for the construction of it. You know, they're heavier than a plastic fender might be, but not by a whole lot. For commuters, rack and fenders, those are the two most important things. You got the fenders to protect you from the elements and the rack to put your backpack or your bag on there. Maybe you're picking up some groceries on the way home. We're gonna see if we can find some puddles to splash around and to really put those fenders to the test since it is raining out here today. Now, one accessory we see on many commuting bikes that is absent on the level here is lights. We don't have a tail light, we don't have a headlight, no light integration at all. That was a little bit of a surprise to me just because I think, you know, like I mentioned, that's pretty standard for a commuting bike. You'll see at least some kind of an integrated headlight and you know, maybe a, a separate tail light that you have to turn on and off manually, not included here. And so I, I asked the folks at Event and why they made that choice. And it was a cost savings measure so that you're not paying for an accessory that you don't need and might swap out anyways. So for people that don't need lights, you know, they don't want to pay for one they're not going to use. And then people who do a lot of commuting at night often will switch either switch out the light that comes with the bike or they'll just add their own onto the handlebar because they have a more powerful one, more powerful one that they prefer to use which makes sense so that that's another you know, justification for it why they're not including the lights so you can add lights on here of course they've got a ton of lights on the event and website that you can get Actually, I, well, you know, while we're talking about it, they've got all kinds of accessories on their site from, you know, racks, fenders, lights, bags, you name it. So if you wanted to get some lights and mount those, you can mount some you know, on the handlebars up there and on the back of the rack. They've got some really competitively priced ones that started around 28 bucks. And then I think I saw some for 60. That's a really powerful headlight and then a taillight combo, which is pretty dang good. That's about what you'd pay if you were getting that third party. So I appreciate that they're not marking those up a bunch. That's that's a pretty good price point for it. It is a little bit of a bummer not to get it included, but easy enough to add. Saddle here is pretty wide, pretty comfy too. It's the it's a Velo saddle, saddle Aventon by Velo and a foam is the construction of it that you're looking at there. No bumpers or anything on the bottom. It's it's a, a good sturdy saddle. It is a little bit uh, a little less aggressive than I would like for a long commute. So you might want to swap that out for something a little bit more aggressive if you're doing really long rides. It does depend just on your style and you really want to go in and test ride one to see how it's going to work for you. Overall, good quality saddle. I like that it's got a pretty good length on the seat post. I was able to get it up there pretty high. Standard diameter on that, 27.2 millimeters. So if you did want to swap that out for a suspension seat post, that would be an easy trade to make. Moving up to the cockpit here to talk about the control system and it's something I want to call out here. They've got pretty dang wide handlebars on here. I think it was 690 millimeters for the width on here. It feels really nice. Now, you know, as I mentioned, I'm really tall. I got long arms. I feel like I can really get a nice wide stance on there. It feels very comfortable, especially compared to, you know, if you're riding like a folding bike or something, you got that really close in riding style. So I like these nice wide handlebars. Rubber grips here. Uh, they're not ergonomic, but they're pretty soft. They got kind of the big pad area on right here. These are locking grips. So if you're bearing down on those, they're not going to rotate on you. I like those. We've got the throttle right here. We'll, we'll just dive in and talk about the electronics control system a bit while we're up here. Let's clean some of that water off the screen. These bikes do have an IPX4 water resistance rating. So that means you don't want to go submerging it in water or anything like that, but they can handle getting splashed by water if you're riding through puddles or you're riding it out in the rain and that kind of, or if you have to park it in the rain for a bit, it'll be okay for that, which is pretty standard for e-bikes, but it's nice on a commuting bike if you do ever have to leave it out there in the rain. So over here on the left grip, we have got the variable thumb throttle. You can vary how much power you give to the motor, button pad, and the display. They use the same control setup and display on all of their bikes. I'm a big fan of this because grayscale is just so easy to see. Even in direct sunlight, 
super easy to see, it gives you all the info you need. We're gonna look at the readouts on there and just in more detail in just a minute. Now, something I wanna say about this bike that is unique in the commuting, well, not unique, but more rare for the commuting e-bike space, is that it's sort of a class two, class three hybrid. So it's got the throttle on it, as you saw. So it is a class two with a throttle and that the throttle can boost you up to 20 miles per hour. You can also activate that with pedal assist. However, as it ships from a Venton, this is actually a class three capable bike. So even though the throttle will cut off once you get to 20 miles per hour, if you keep on pedaling past that point, pedal assist will still help you out all the way up to 28 miles per hour, class three speeds. That is pretty dang awesome. I like that because it's you can you can ride much faster on pedal assist for a commuting bike. That is it sh saves so much time on your commute. And so I like that they have this sort of a hybrid setup here. Now you want to be careful with that because there's some places where you might have some regulations for uh, so so there's there's some places let's put it this way. There's some places that if you have a class 3 bike that can go up to 28 miles per hour with pedal assist, the bike cannot have an active throttle at all. It's just part of how they write the laws. So Aventon is prepared for that. It's actually pretty straightforward to disconnect the throttle so it's not live at all. And they've got, a, like I mentioned, the excellent manual that can help you with that. You can also reach out to Aventon support or just stop by a dealer. Just check the laws in your area to see if that's something you need to do to make sure that you are riding legally. All right, now diving back into the control system here wipe those water droplets off again but when you first fire it up here this is what you're looking at you got your speed readout right front and center nice big digits super easy to see pedal assist you can go all the way down to zero where it's completely off or all the way up to level five something they do on their bikes that's pretty interesting to me is the throttle even when pedal assist is on the throttle is completely deactivated when the bike is stationary you have to actually pedal a little bit get some speed going and then the throttle will work that's a unique configuration. We'll talk about that a little bit more on the ride test and the ramifications of that, but just be aware of that. Now you've got the battery at the top of there where it says energy bar. I like this because check it out. You've got a 10 bar readout here, 10% increments. That is very precise. I'm used to seeing, you know, four or five bars, you're getting 20, 25% steps, not a whole lot of precision. This feels a lot better for gauging how much battery you've got left. So it can be, <laughs> make it a little, it makes it nicer if you're really pushing the limits of your range. You got a good range on here too with that battery in there. That's a 48 volt, 14 amp hour battery, good high capacity. We'll talk about the battery in just a bit here. Coming back up here to the display, you got those five levels of pedal assist. At the bottom, by default, it shows your odometer. Total mileage on the bike, you can short press that M button. See your trip A, your trip B, your voltage that's coming from the battery. And this is the timer. How Basically, that's just the timer for how long the bike has been powered on for this current cycle. And then back out to the odometer. If you want to change settings, you hold down plus and minus right there. The first one is the backlight, so you can change your backlight level. You can also turn that on without coming into the settings if you need to. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. You short press the M here, can change, I think that's if you wanna change your units between Imperial and Metric. Come back out there. Yeah, Imperial and Metric, press that again. 36, I don't remember what that one was for. There's the wheel size, 27.5. Now, obviously, you, you're going to want to be careful about these. You don't want to just come in here and start changing a whole bunch of settings. Consult the manual or talk to a Venton if you need to make any changes. You're probably not going to because they, you know, the bike is tuned and ready to ride when you first get it. When you're back out here at just the normal screen, if you want to turn that backlight on, just hold down the up arrow here. And that will activate the backlight. And you'll see it shows the manual light on right there. That way you know that you have it turned on. I think I might have actually disabled the backlight when I was goofing around in the settings there. Let's come back out here and put that on three and then we'll exit out and then we'll turn on the backlight. There we go. It's it's very bright. Honestly, I'm glad they have the setting in there so you can tweak it because if we were if it was dark, this would probably be a little bit distracting to have it that bright. So it's good. You can turn that down when I hit that, turn that off. You can also activate walk mode by holding down the down arrow that will engage the motor on the rear so that we'll push the bike forward. Pretty handy if you're walking with a friend or something like that and you don't want to push the bike because they are a little bit heavy at about 58 pounds. 
that's pretty standard on e-bikes to see that feature. Continuing around the cockpit to look at our other components here, the shifter that we've got, the group set is, this is a nice component actually. We'll, we'll come back to that back there in a minute. Shimano Acera, that's pretty high quality stuff from Shimano. The shifter here, this is their rapid fire trigger shifter that you can activate up and down there. You can dump up to three down at once when you're downshifting, which is nice if you're coming up to that hill, realize that you forgot to downshift a bit. I like these shifters, they have a nice, the nice satisfying click feel to them. They're not as easy to actuate if you've got really heavy gloves on for winter riding. You can still do it, but just be aware of that. That's the only downside of that style. For the brakes here, we've got hydraulic disc brakes. These are the Bengal Aries 3 we're looking at here, and they've got motor inhibitors built in, so they cut power to that motor as soon as you actuate those levers. I really like hydraulics because they don't need maintenance as frequently, and they're also, they're much easier to actuate, and essentially instant activation times for those brakes. Looking down here, we've got dual piston calipers on these, 180 millimeter rotors in the front and rear, good size for good heat dissipation, solid performance from these brakes. You know, great stopping power from them. I like those a lot. All right, I think we covered everything in the cockpit. I talked a little bit about the cable management. They've done a solid job with it. Got these nice thick wraps around it to keep everything bunched up, running it through the frame, which looks super nice. A really solid job. Now for the battery, let's, uh, let's go ahead and dive into that. It's a 48 volt, 14 amp hour battery. We've got the charging port right up here, pretty high up on the down tube on the right side. Great spot for it because it's well out of range of those crank arms. If you have the charging port down here, it's a risk for the cranks hitting it if you have to move the bike or maybe it gets bumped while it's charging. This is a solid spot. The removal process for it, we'll, we'll pop it out here so you guys can take a look. It's got a two-step removal process, which is nice when it's on the underside of the down tube here. It doesn't fall out and catch you by surprise. Got the keys here, so you turn this to unlock it first, and then to actually remove it, you've got to fl flip this little switch here, and then the battery will come out. It sits pretty snugly in there too, something I appreciate. It is a little bit crowded on space if you don't have the wheel turned. Keep in mind, normally you're gonna be doing this with two hands. <laughs> Makes it a lot easier. So there you go, 48 volts, 14 amp hour. These batteries use Samsung 18650 cells. Those are good quality cells from Samsung. You've got the little button and readout right here to check the charge level. It's, it's pretty basic. It's, I, I'm guessing it probably shows a different, like a grade of color in the charge, you know, maybe orange for medium and red for dead. I'm, I'm speculating on that there though. Let's see, there's the charge port on the bottom. So if you wanna charge the battery off the bike, you can do that. Or if you, and that, that's a good idea generally, if you're parking the bike outside or in the garage, just pop the battery out and bring it in with you. You don't wanna be exposing these lithium ion batteries to extreme temperatures or temperature swings. They do a lot better if you can keep them indoors and you know uh, charge them inside rather than leaving them outdoors. And it's about, I think it was 7.9 pounds. 7.9 pounds for the weight on this battery. See if we can get it back in here with one hand. Uh, it does snap and lock back in there and then you turn the key back up to fully lock it in. That way you don't have to worry about it coming loose uh, while you're riding or anything like that. Moving around a bit here to talk about other components. Standard 170 millimeter cranks here, aluminum alloy on those. And these are alloy pedals as well. They're a little bit bigger and the, the good pins on here too for traction. These, these feel really nice. I, I like the pedals, they, they get the job done. Appreciate that they mounted the kickstand to the rear here. This helps to, so you can move the bike around with the kickstand down. Don't have to worry about locking up the cranks against the kickstand. And it's also good on a bike like this. You've got the motor back here that adds a bit more weight. You're looking at nine pounds on that motor. And then the rear rack, of course, if you've got some stuff on the rear rack back here, you almost need to have the kickstand back here to help balance the bike because it gets to be a little bit rear heavy at that point. When you don't have any gear on here, it's very well balanced since the battery is up front in the down tube there. So it's the center when I was lifting it for weighing it is like right about in there. 
pretty close to the center. They did a good job on that. All right, what else are we working with on here? We got the suspension fork up front. You're looking at 75 millimeters of travel. These are 32 millimeter stainless steel stanchions on there. You can adjust this. You've got your lockout on the right side and preload over there on the left. So you can tighten that up a bit if you're, you know, you're carrying some extra weight. Maybe you're just a larger rider. A pretty solid fork here too. It's an SR Suntour as you can see, their Moby A32. So pretty decent coverage there. You know, it's not a mountain bike and that's not what they're going for. So for a commuter, that is a solid suspension fork right there. And the tires help out too on the ride comfort side of things. These Kenda tires, it's their quick Drumlin tires. These are a little bit wider than standard. You're looking at a 27.5 by 2.2. We're not getting up into plus size yet, but a little bit bigger. These are really good tires, honestly. I'm a fan of these. They're e-bike specific. They've got this hybrid tread pattern you can see here where it's a bit more smooth and efficient in the center. And then you get a little bit bigger, a little bit more aggressive on the sides so that while you're turning, especially you have a little bit more traction. Puncture protection is included here. The K, what is it? The KS Plus, I think is what they call it. Good puncture protection. Got this sidewall striping right there, that reflective circle around it. Good for side visibility. Excellent choice for a commuting bike because you're, especially if you're gonna be out riding in traffic a lot, you get a little bit more visibility from the side. I love seeing that there. Moving on back here, let's talk about the drivetrain a bit more. We looked at the shifters up there. So here is the derailleur that you're working with, Shimano Acera. That's an awesome derailleur. Shimano starts down at the Turney for their entry level, and then you got the Altus, and after that comes the Acera. That is a nice quality touch that's great to see on such a value priced bike. We've got a pretty decent range on the cassette back here. It is not a free wheel, it's a cassette. Uh, where was that? The Hyperglide CSHG200 8. So that's an 8 speed and a nice big range. Well, I mean, you know, it's not a mountain bike range, but you're looking at a range, I think it was 12 to 34 teeth on that rear cassette. That's pretty solid. That will do well for the, the higher end speeds, having that 12 cog back there. It helps out quite a bit for if you're wanting to ride at class three, go all the way up to 28 miles an hour. And then 34 on that first gear there, really nice for taking on some hills, especially if you're trying to pedal a bit more and not rely on the motor, get a little bit more exercise or even just getting started. And you'll need that for getting started, even though you have a throttle, we'll, we'll talk about that more in just a little bit here. Uh, you're looking at, uh, I think it was a 42 tooth on that steel chain ring up front. And this is a, double-sided guard that they got on here as well as you can see so this helps it's a bash guard helps to protect the chain ring but it's also a chain guide keeps it from bouncing off if you're going over bumps or anything like that really nice really nice touch i'm glad that they included that we've got a cadence sensor over on the other side so if you're not using the throttle and you want to use the cadence sensor for activating that pedal assist there you go sealed 12 magnet cadence sensor Big fan of that, it's more durable. There's some bikes that will use an unsealed cadence sensor that sits you know, right over here behind the chain ring. Bigger ring and the magnets are exposed so they can potentially get you know, bumped loose or the, the sensor can get bent. That's not a common occurrence, but it does happen. Prevented by having the sealed sensor here. I'm a fan of that. Let's see, we talked about uh, most of the components here. As I mentioned, that's a 500 watt motor in the back from Shenji peaking at around 750 watts. Pretty average on the volume. Feels solid on the power, honestly. It feels like a, a nice, powerful motor. There's no slap guard back here, but the motor control cable does, it's like right in the perfect spot to prevent most of those chain impacts. So you're probably gonna be okay there, not have to worry about the chain slapping and scratching up that right chain stay. I brought the charger here so that you guys can take a look at that. This is a little bit better than the standard charger that we see on most e-bikes, which are two amp chargers. This one is a three amp. What that means is that you can charge faster, a little bit faster charge time on it. Now you do pay for that with weights. It's heavier since it's higher amperage. So 1.8 pounds is what I weighed this at. Still pretty good, honestly. That's still low enough that it's easy to toss this in a bag, carry it with you. If you're you know, wanting to charge while you're at work or something like that, you may not need to on the level because it's got Pretty solid range. So the average range that they have listed for it is a 40 mile range. And they've actually got a really nice real world testing graph on their site that shows about what you can expect at the different levels. So, you know, it might be 
quite a bit lower. I, I think they, I wanted to say it was like 25 or 30 if you're like really juicing it and just using the throttle. And then if you're using pedal assist level one, you're doing a bit more work yourself, more like 55 to 60 mile range. Pretty solid. So if your commute is on the shorter side and you like to use more of a medium level pedal assist, get some exercise while you go, you may not have to charge at work. But if you do have to, charger's nice and lightweight and pretty fast so you'll be able to you know pop that battery out bring it in and charge while you're on the job now this is the same charger that they use for all of their different bikes which is pretty nice they're interchangeable if you would need to do that all right folks so we've well, we've talked about all the components and everything for the walker i'm just looking to make sure that i didn't forget something something super obvious but i think we talked about all of it it's time to you know, jump on take it for a spin so i'm going to fire that up here I've got the seat all the way up at the maximum height. As I mentioned, this is the medium frame. Now I'm not quite able to get full leg extensions on it. So I'm super tall, six foot three. But remember, they've got a large size frame. I was a little bummed they didn't have one for me to ride, but that's all right. The, and the difference in the frame size, it's usually measured by the seat post tube length. So this one here, the medium is a 17.5 inch and then the large is a 20 inch. That's pretty standard for you know, different frame sizes. So that's, if, if you're pretty tall, honestly, I think the large is gonna be a pretty solid fit. I, I love these handlebars, how, how spread out they are. You can get a nice wide grip on it. All right, so we're gonna take off, do a little bit of riding here, talk about how the performance is, how it feels. Something I wanted to point out here, and this seems to be the case on all events and bikes, which is a unique configuration, is that the throttle is not live from a stop. No matter, you know, even if you're all the way up in pedal assist five, nothing on the throttle. You have to get going just a little bit. We'll, we'll start start riding here. Once you once you get it going a few miles per hour, then the throttle is live. And pretty powerful too. Like really nice job on that motor. But that is a configuration that I have not seen before on these e-bikes that have the throttle. And the reason that might be a downside for you is if you like to have the throttle to get started, so you, you juice the throttle, get going, and then you switch over to pedaling, cannot do that on here. You've got to start pedaling first. Once you get moving, then you can engage the throttle. Now, the the uh, cassette in the back here has got a pretty good range. That first gear is the 34 tooth one. That's pretty decent. So even starting on a bit of an incline is not going to be, not gonna be real difficult, but you, you can't use the throttles, just be aware of that. Another I love that they have full throttle available. It doesn't matter what assist level you're in. So we're in pedal assist one, but we can juice that throttle and get full power. That is really nice if you were maybe cruising in pedal assist level one, you know, not using a whole lot of assistance, then you need to accelerate quickly. Maybe you hit a big hill and you just need a little extra help. Maybe you need to accelerate out of the way of a car or something like that. That is really nice. It's one of my favorite features, honestly. It always bums me out a little bit when the assist level is tied to the throttle, so you have to shift up if you want to get a little bit of extra juice. The pedal assist is pretty aggressive, even in just level one here. It kicks in there's quite a bit of help that it gives you and the way it seems to be tuned is that it gives you quite a bit of help but then once you get up to you know around 12 miles per hour is when it really starts to slow down and then as you increase that it'll it'll bump you up to you know the next speed cutoff and remember class three here so we can if we go up to five like we it's powerful like we're i'm not even pedaling very hard and we're just zooming right on past 20 miles per hour pretty dang awesome for you having a class three commuter being able to reach those higher speeds slow it on down here a bit i'm actually gonna turn that pedal assist off so we can do spend a little time with the shifter here go all the way down to that first gear now i'm you know going about you know under 10 miles an hour and pretty high cadence here so it's it's a solid first gear for starting on an incline it really makes it okay that you can't use the throttle right from zero and it's solid shifting you know if you've used the shimano acera before you know what you're getting into good shifting i love the range having eight gears to work with we can dump them back down really fast so good solid performance there i mean you know like i said shimano acera you've used it before <laughs> you know what you're what to expect with that 
This does feel really nice riding just as a bike, just cruising along, not using any pedal assist on it. It, it feels nice and smooth. The, the fork does a good job to soften up the ride and the tires too. I'm having the, that extra width on the tires. It's not a whole lot, but you'd be surprised at just how much it helps out. I'm actually gonna switch over to the chest mount on the camera now, just so I can really kind of get some speed going and talk about how that feels you know, riding it properly from that commuting standpoint. So be right back. Test, test, make sure we're recording. All right, I've got the chest mount on here. I'm gonna lower the seat down a little bit. This is lower than I would normally ride it at, but it helps out with the angle for the chest camera. That way you guys don't have to, you know, be staring down at the pavement. The seating position on this is, I, I would just call it forward. It's definitely not a forward aggressive, and especially since I'm with the lower seat, it's a bit more upright, which feels pretty dang nice. So I'm gonna put that into uh, pedal assist. Actually, I'm gonna turn the pedal assist off. I'm just gonna ride it like a bike a little bit. I like to check this out on commuting bikes, just riding it without any electronic assistance. See how it feels. Because if you're a commuter and you, you like to get a little bit more exercise, you may ride it like this sometimes, especially if you're, maybe you're coming home, so you're not in a hurry, you wanna enjoy the sights, get some exercise. And it feels great. It feels very smooth. The, the drivetrain feels, I mean, it's the Shimano Acera, of course, so it is as expected there. Good performance from the shifters. We can push that speed up a little bit. So I'm, I'm a fan, I'm a big fan of this, this feel, the ride feeling for this bike. And I've mentioned a couple times that I like the wider handlebars on here. This is only a medium frame too, but it's, it's a little bit wider. It's nice if you've got long arms and maybe a kind of a broad shoulder build. Really solid feel to it. I like the grips. Nice that they're locking. All right, so we're gonna kick this electronic system into drive here and see what we can do. Now I mentioned that on the throttle, you can get up to 20 miles per hour. So if we you know, just go on the throttle, quite a lot of power from the motor back there. Doesn't take very long to get up to that 20 mile per hour limit. And if we were to start pedaling while we're up here, we're not really getting anything from the motor. The way that it works on, the way they have it tuned on these, is it seems like right around 12, 13 miles per hour is where the motor stops assisting when you're in pedal assist level one. Now, when you kick that on up to two, three, four, et cetera, it'll help you a lot further. We're going to do that once we cross the road right up here. And we'll, you know, we'll see how long is it gonna take us to, you really crank that up there. I'm gonna, got a nice bump here, put that suspension to test. All right, so we're gonna crank on up to five and let's just see what we can do here. Just, oh, it takes off. So much power back there. That's awesome. Shifting on up through the gears. It's a little bit bumpy here. There we go, we're about 24, 25. There we go, yeah, we're getting right up there to that top speed. It feels solid. The frame feels amazing. I'm not feeling any frame flex. And this is with, you know, the seat lower than I would like to have it. Oh, there's some bumps. <laughs> oh man, that feels fantastic. I'm gonna drop that assist back down a little bit. Feels solid. I, I do, I mentioned the frames, be it feels good and like, oh, fantastic. If you're somebody that enjoys riding no-handed, pretty easy to do on this bike. Motor sound is, you know, definitely, definitely fairly audible back there. The bike is quite stealthy in appearance, but, oh, let's see if we can put the, <laughs> put that suspension to use there. So yeah, it's, it's a fairly audible, I mean, it's, it's right about middle of the pack in terms of how loud the motor is. But if you're riding this thing all out, people are definitely gonna notice. They probably would anyways, you're you know, going 28 miles an hour on a bike. Oh yeah, those tires feel awesome. Really good traction. 
I mean, I'm, I'm on asphalt here, so that's not the most extreme test, but they feel great. I like having the, I guess kind of a hybrid, you know, they're a little bit bigger than standard, gets you a little bit extra cushion and comfort while still being pretty dang efficient. Come on back over here. Oh, that's our stop. No brake test. Uh, the brakes do feel great too. I don't think I've talked about them yet, but I mean, solid, good, good. I like these hydraulic brakes. They're the Bengal Aries. Is it Aries? Is that right? Yeah, <laughs> Bengal Aries threes. Let's uh, we'll get going up to twenty and do a little stop test for you. Brake test. Awesome. Very good short stopping distance. They're easy to actuate with those hydraulics. So even if you have, maybe you have some the low grip strength, so the brake levers are a bit difficult for you. Nice and solid. Let's shift this back down a little bit here. Pretty, pretty standard delay for the cadence sensor to kick in. That's the downside of most cadence sense based systems. So you need to crank around one or two revolutions on the crank arms before it kicks in. So if I shift this up here so the motor's a bit louder, you know, when I, when I um, start pedaling here, there it goes. And when you stop, a little bit of a delay. Uh, so that's pretty standard, you know, a revolution or two around on the crank arms to get it going. Remember that you've got those motor inhibitors on the brakes here. So you squeeze those brake levers, cuts off power to the motor instantly. It's also nice if you're just squeezing them a little bit and, and still pedaling, then it's not gonna activate the motor on you. So that can be nice if you just want to disable it for just a moment. Here we go. Back on the smooth trail now. Pretty effortless. I'm, I'm not really putting a whole lot onto the onto the cranks here to get up to that 28 and I can actually pedal past that a bit still without you know putting a whole lot of effort into it oh yeah feels awesome can uh, come back here onto the sand see how the traction is yeah, feels pretty great. Feels awesome. Okay, gang, that is a wrap. This was the Aventon Level. This is their new commuting class three e-bike that also has a throttle, kind of a cool class two, class three hybrid. Really compelling commuting bike. I love how many features they packed into it for just $15.99. That's a pretty solid price point. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. If you got questions about this, you know, maybe you think we missed something, you just wanna talk about the bike, chime in down in the comments section. You can also catch us back on electricbikereview.com. We've got the full written review, specs, everything you could want there. You've got a compare tool, so you can compare this head to head with other bikes from Aventon or other companies. Check out our dealer locator and forums while you're there. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Ride safe out there, we'll see you next time.